service for the money they give. I don't know of any way that that the that this is this done. This is the point that's going to be brought out when you start saying to all these other nurses saying you, you should pay some, and they're going to say, well, I don't get any service from the registry. May I speak? Well, it's a personal obligation to do a lot of things, but people don't see it that way. This is the problem. Well, I'm a nurse, and I'm also an individual, and within the last three weeks, I have had me use the registry for personal use, and it was real good. Well, that's able. all right. That's all right. But this well, is not, every nurse was not going to see it like we may see it, and I'm not adverse to, to the 5th District doing something. But when I go back out here and say to all these other nurses, you've got to help pay to keep the registry going, <coughs> tell them why, and in a nice way, say it's your responsibility. Say, well, I don't get it any calls from the rest year, I'm not going to pay for services I don't receive. Well, you that's just like so many fight. of them won't join the professional organizations either. Do. They say, what do I get out of it? Well, it's hard to spell out to them what they get out of it. Well, How many members did me. you have now that belong <laughs> let's, uh, to the Let's have the motion. Uh, I move that a letter of information be set, sent to all private duty nurses belonging to the 5th District regarding the st uh, status of the registry and asking for a reply stating whether or not they would support the professional registry financially. Current rates are $50 per year. Is that correct? The numbers supporting would influence the possibility of the registry continuing to operate. Just bring that out. Did that get a second? Yes. Um, Ms. Serves, is this still as you would endorse it. Is there further discussion as relates to this motion? Is there any way that uh, it seems that all the correspondence that we send out, we get a small return, you know, 30 out of 300 and this sort of thing. Uh, would you automatically assume that the return was a negative response? Or is there something that we could build into this that would take care of this? I think that won't be levelable. Madam, 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 I've seen in times past a psychological approach. I'll just present it like this. The services of the 5th District Registry are thus and so. And then state what our services are determine if we can get the people to endorse it, that they're going to support it uh, by being a member of it, by filling a portion of the bottom of the sheet. Use no negatives in it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then you would have it made. What was the, I missed that idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh, but I mean, we could just say, uh, uh, we the services of the 5th District are and all persons that have gone to subscribe to it would just indicate yes. We just say that uh, you would have, and we list one, two, three, four, and the service for this is fifty dollars. An individual would sign a name and close the check. And be made. The register Great. committee meets tomorrow. Maybe they could write the letter. Yes. The cutting do down on the well, hours. We've had if that uh, is, um, we have uh, 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 the board. The board. We asked what I was. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, as a board, declared that we will, we wish to uh, assist and or wish to continue this. We haven't had a declaration from this board. Don't and we unless need? you have that, uh, your letter's going to be mighty weak. So I move, Madam Chairman, that um, this board go on record as wishing to support and continue the professional nurses registry in the fifth district. What do you, you have okay. used the word support. I need to know for any clarification. By support you mean financial support that the board will financially support. Well, if you want me to write that financial in there, I can. I'm, I'm asking you what you've spoken. You mean all types of support, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. More than Including you. financial. Mm -hmm. you, boards are authorized to make $100 liability today over, over above their budget. Mm -hmm. 
we vote on that? Yes, I have a motion already. I would to do the reason I was asking is Ms. Hutchinson spoke already to this motion that we supported. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was asking, uh, we're asking the members in this motion to support it. And we need to take action on this this motion. We need to dispense of this motion before we entertain another motion. I think uh, the intent, if I might say this, the intent of, of the uh, Ms. Wells' motion is to find out if the participants or if the those uh, nurses who are officially listed as private duty nurses are uh, wishing to support the professional registry financially for next year. Uh, unless this board is willing to say they're going to support it uh, financially, how else can we proceed but to appeal to the to the private duty nurses? Am I bringing Madam the points Chair, together for you? Would you like to entertain the second motion first to see if the board so wants to? And let them know go. Could that be done? She can withdraw this. Mm -hmm. Well, don't take it away completely because I think it's a real good motion. Well, that's what she well, just said. Could she could but if we, could, with if, we had, if we were on record as, uh, yeah, even if we yeah. said moral yeah. support, uh, which seems Well, I think moral support is all we could offer because we cannot speak for the, you know, for the well, body, the district that, body. But, Tomorrow support, you know, sometimes it's worth more than money. Mm -hmm. Madam Chairman, I'll, I'll just move that that be tabled until the uh, second motion is considered, if that is the wishes. Madam Chairman, before we, uh, you know, there's finances connected with, uh, if we send out a letter, I don't think we'll get as much response back if you send out a double, put it on a poster card you know, a double poster card, but that would have to come in there instead of saying a letter. Uh, and you'd send it for about the same thing as you would, and then all they'd have to do is just, you know, to return the other half. What do you think of that? Well, my feeling was that that explanation to the membership was what? extremely important because I believe yeah, I do too. that there are a good many people that do not know what the status of uh, the professional registry is, but, yes. uh, the ones that are in uh, meetings Ms. might, but Ms. there Wells, are many I know, others. But it could be put on card form, what I mean, your, what you're saying on card form and giving them a card to return, maybe they would uh, respond in answering yes or no quicker than if you expected them to write a letter and spend five cents. I think the mechanics of it could be handled outside of the board of directors meeting properly. Well, if she says letter, we'll have to send a letter. She, she says that, call, then we send the see, call. See, that, ha that has to be clarified now. Okay. Yes, I have a, a second now. We've discussed. No, I have not had a, s a second. Miss uh, Wells was discussing tabling this, and then there was a question raised before the second. I would say well, with the table. Ma Madam Chairman, all I wanted was just, just merely for Miss Wells to change from a letter to uh, Card. double cards to get a re to get a reply. That you're we not going to get a reply for a letter a motion to table the only motion that we've had and a second. So all we need to do is, is to uh, table this motion that a letter of information be sent to all private duty nurses belonging to the 5th District regarding the status of the registry and asking for a reply stating whether or not they would support the professional registry financial, financially. 
the number supporting would influence the possibility of the registry continuing to uh, operate. So the floor is now cleared for Yes, we need a majority. For all in favor of tabling this motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. She can even write that one for us to table it, or does she have to write it? No. No, no. got it. Until when? Just table it. Just table it. Table don't it. Table it. Table it. All right. Carry it. Who's second? <laughs> Who's second? <laughs> Say aye. Is it Langford? Is it Langford? All right. <laughs> or other motions. I'm, I'm getting this written. I'm writing. Well, you know, one thing I don't think anybody realizes just how much goes on in the registry. Well, in either department. I went there today at noon and doing the 15 minutes that I was there. That telephone didn't stop one, two minutes in order for me to tell Miss uh, Hooker the real reason I was there. Or oh, I just had to find and leave my material with her because of the call I'm so numerous. Does this sound all right? I move that the Board of Directors of the 5th District give my own support and all assistance possible, and all assistance possible to continue the operation of the Nursing Professional Registry. Does that say what we want to say? We have the motion and it's been seconded. Is there discussion? Comments? This is not financial assistance spelled out at this time, is that correct? No. Which we can't don't have no, the power to do. Oh, somebody got to say Ms. English says. Ms. English second. It's possible that we're in the possible land needs to be right through the wild. The motion then I move that the Board of Directors of the 5th District give my support and all assistance possible to continuing the operation of the Nurses Professional Registry. Hearing no discussion or uh, questions, then I assume we're ready to vote. All in favor of this motion, please. Please read it again. <laughs> All right. I move that the Board of Directors of the 5th District give moral support and all assistance possible to continue the operation of the Nurses Professional Register. Is there discussion? I don't have discussion. I just feel like I shouldn't be here. <laughs> in there and I'm speaking as an individual and I don't know that I'm even allowed to do this I'm supposed to speak for the section um, we do not support the professional registry at the hospital in which I am employed we opened about three and a half years ago and very conscientiously called the registry each time we needed a private practice nurse because of our location, and I'm from East Point, and we don't have trolleys that go by very often and this kind of thing, uh, we were not able to get nurses, and very soon, of necessity, set up our own call list and have continued to. Until January of this year, we did call the registry, but we no longer call the registry. I feel a little bit ashamed to say I'm supporting the registry and vote this way when I honestly don't. Madam Chairman, could I speak to that point just a minute? Um, I'd like to say again, as I see it, I see no conflict except maybe financial, and I think that's up to the individual registrant. I see no conflict in the hospital's call list 
and in a central professional registry. Does that help? I guess it does. I would like to have a place to call and not tie up our secretary all day to get a nurse for a patient that could nurse the patient. In this way, I'd like to be able to support it. Madam President, uh, I am uh, voting in support of a principle if I understand the motion. That's I right. believe that a community the size yeah. of Atlanta should have an agency and the professional nurses should support it. Should support. Now that's I can put that in there if you want it to put in there. But I think it's because I've never been able personally to get a nurse. I'd like for you to see our fine record. If the <laughs> indigent people in the emergencies of Atlanta were nursed, uh, you know who's the nurse that we have. And it'd be your kinfolk and my kinfolk that there were an accident. The richest man in the world, poorest man. I'm going to support the principal. <laughs> I'm going to say one more thing. You coming up? Be quiet. How much are you willing to support the principal As out well. of your pocketbook, out of your That's staff's pocketbook, thought. when it doesn't meet your patient's needs? Um, well, I believe I can speak for almost any <laughs> hospital in the state in the community, the registry has not met the needs due to various and sundry reasons in adequate numbers. The 5th District can't do too much about that. They uh, will have to support the schools of nursing and recruitment in those areas in order to add to our numbers, but calls have not been filled. They've been filled in so far as there were people there to take care of the calls and uh, considering various limitations and so forth. If every nurse in the 5th District were called upon, I mean all the members of this association were called upon to support this uh, registry financially, would each one be expected to pay $50 a year? No. No. Well, that's does that entire fifty dollars paid by the private duty go for the registry and nothing else? That's right. Well, what else do they get out of being a member of GSNA then? It's the same thing. What do you get out of outside? But my, all my money, I don't understand that. All my money is going for. I mean, none of it goes to the uh, GSNA per se. Your fifty is divided. Well, then all this $50 doesn't go for the registry. Yes, it does. Yes. That part yes. does. Yes. But I don't understand that. They you mean they pay, pay 100 They're doing right. They pay $50 they pay for the same mm-hmm. dues that you pay plus the $50 to the registry. For the call the service. They, they pay oh, for a call oh, service. Okay. 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 The registry. I was well, thinking they pay just a flat fee. No. While we're on the subject, I've heard this said, and this is just sheer grapevine, I guess, that the private duty nurses have to belong to GSNA. In order Before to work on the registry. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Because well, it's, it's a non-profit. A rule. It's a non-profit it organization, and you have to service to just non-members. Many years ago. May I tell the members? I don't understand. Madam Chairman, our lawyer, Mr. Jackson, when 13th District wanted to come in and be serviced by the 5th District <laughs> Registry, <laughs> uh, he went into great detail about it, and we have a written statement on there. If we service non-members, we lose our professional status and are known as an employment agency. If we service non-members also, taking 15th, uh, 13th District or anyone else, then we lose our non-profit uh, rating. We are taxable. So there are two reasons why it's mandatory in the American Nurses Association for you if you maintain a professional registry to maintain membership and service members only. 
But this is an A and A route. Well, that, then on the other hand, how can they force private duty nurses to belong to GSMA they, when they can't force other people to join? Well, uh, by membership, you see, you know, you, it's like a club sense. and organization. If you go to the, one of the country clubs, they uh, you're getting you Initiation rights, you have yeah. to go through. Mm -hmm. But we are sustaining mm -hmm. members. We, we have that in writing there, that we service only sustaining members. Otherwise, we are non-professional, we are employment agency, and then we are taxable. There was, was a time, I believe, in Atlanta when we had a commercial registry and a professional registry. You did not have to belong to the professional registry in order to belong to the commercial registry. That was a distinction. If you wanted uh, we're still, we're sort of deviating from our motion here. Uh, I'll read the motion again, and if we can keep our discussion to the motion that the Board of Directors of the 5th District give moral support and all assistance possible to continue the operation of the Nurses Professional Registry. Uh, one other question, too. Uh, Identify all the systems possible. Right now, we're not talking about a dollar or cent. We're talking about our talent, our time, our energy, and maybe our projected goals that eventually we may have to say a prorated amount. You know, a combination of offices or suite of offices. But right now, we're just saying that which we can do in the framework of our present operation. Is that, is that the intent? The intent. Miss, that's what they had in mind. Thank you for saying that. Is there further discussion? Then we will uh, take a vote on the motion that the Board of Directors of the 5th District give moral support and all assistance possible to continue the operation of the Nurses Professional Registry. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the motion is carried. May I move that we take the motion that Ms. Wells made from the table? Second. Okay. Then we'll have a vote on the motion to take our previous motion. It has been table. All in favor to move from the table, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. We're then back to our first motion that a letter of information be sent to all private union nurses belonging to the 5th District regarding <coughs> the status of the registry and asking for a reply stating whether or not they would support the professional registry financially. Current rate $50 per year. The numbers supporting would influence the possibility of the registry continuing to operate. Is there discussion again on this motion? Could we change that word letter to communication and then let whoever does this writing decide whether they want to put it in a letter or a folded yes, postcard or what? Uh, the following Karen is helping me here that to clarify just to say the information be sent. If That's what I mean. Um, <laughs> uh, is this <laughs> Would that clarify it now? May I read this once again? Ms. May I ask Ms. Quill one question? Should you not specify a given length of time for the reply instead of somebody putting their waste, putting on the table and aim to do it, and if when they get it, just like the uh, time limit on a, a bill that they have to pay to lose their discount or their right to express themselves, if, instead of aiming to do it with the holidays coming up now, uh, it would be easy to put it aside and think, well, I do that at the first of the year. Could that be included in the information that's sent out? If you say information, then the people that make up the letter could have this as information. Well, there's a place there, and the reply 
by a certain deadline, it seems to me, so you know how they do so. I'm just asking, would they? For whoever writes the letter, I would suggest that uh, the deadline be pretty shortly because we should know how much support before we cash a single check that might be sent to the registry. So that we'll know whether we can go through the year or whether we can't. I have a question about it. In relation to this, it's a rather nebulous, ill-defined idea, but it seems to me that one of the biggest problems is that we're split right down the middle and we all, you know, have nightmares about this and pray and everything else to come at a more, co get a more cohesive group. And will this type of memo do anything to making this <laughs> line black? Or if it is, I, I would like some discussion on this from people who really have the pulse of private duties, private duty nurses. I think they would appreciate getting this communication. You think so, Mr. Chancellor? I think you give moral support. If you like the need. When you state that the board has gone on record to give all support possible. If they get that information about the board, then I can see. This is part of the problem. I wonder how many of these 400 plus nurses know that the registry, that this board did, members of this board did recruit funds to carry without coming back to them to continue operation. Mm -hmm. Now I would like also maybe to be remembered that last year, that this board went through the same thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of trying to uh, direct funds for the continued operation or financial support to take the registry into a new year without having to borrow from next year's dues. Is this right. not correct? Right. But this seems to be the bulk of the problem is the lack of communication. Mm -hmm. 30 private duty nurses at an annual meeting Last December, after this board went, discussed this quite at length, I believe you stated you did not have a quorum. So the membership of the private duty nurses then did not. A year ago. Yes, a year ago. So uh, uh, this has been uh, a part of the, the uh, problem is uh, uh, I, I particularly get involved with this by nature of being uh, direct, uh, the uh, president of the district and that uh, I get attacked pretty frequently with half-truths. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a fair thing to say at, a, at the convention that the general thought at the convention was that this board did not approve uh, uh, the fee for private duty. And uh, the board did approve the fee with some stipulations, but this is not the kind of, uh, so it's a breakdown in communications, yet uh, I personally went to the private duty meeting at Mrs. Zerp's request, but there were again 104 members of the 400 plus. So uh, uh, I, uh, we, we really should try to give facts. And uh, I, I would like to bring out that there is evidence. And um, I, I question that the, the members, and I personally would, as president of the district, would hope that those things that are positive and the current concern, how many times have we met this year? Uh, of concern, mm -hmm. genuine concern. Uh, it's gotten away every week. I have a meeting, <laughs> and I am con right. genuinely concerned. And uh, I think uh, if we can somehow convey this to the practitioners, all of them, and appeal for their interest and support, and the fact that this board is concerned and interested. Uh, and I would hope that the tone would be established in this letter, too. That's what I was after. I mean, this sort of thing. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get who who made the motion to move the uh, motion from the table. Ms. Ms. English, and who seconded? Ms. Lang. Uh, thank you. Now, do we uh, do we sort of have the tone set of what the letter would convey? Yeah, but the fact has not been established to who will. Uh, write this because there's an art in doing this sort of thing, I think. I'd be glad to make another it. motion following this one if, or somebody uh, can. Do you wish to deal with this one? Is there further discussion about the fact that we do want to send the information? Ms. Langford, we did not answer your question about asking for a reply. Uh, did you want to? No, I just asked Ms. Wells, would she like to? add that into that motion with a deadline for the reply. I, I believe that we could trust the whoever reply writes the letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, then may I read the motion and let's uh, move to this then. That information be sent to all private duty nurses belonging to the 5th District regarding the status of the registry and asking for a reply stating whether or not they would support the professional reg registry financially, current rates $50 per year. The members, the numbers supporting would influence the possibility of the registry continuing to operate. All in favor of this motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the motion is carried. Madam President, to clear this other point, I would like to move that this letter of information be written by the registry committee with the approval of the district president. <laughs> But isn't that, uh, would automatically be without a motion that the district president would know what was going out if the, uh, the board was going to be responsible for it. I don't think you need a recommendation card, but they'd have to let the president know. I think it would have more authority if it was a committee of the board. An ad hoc committee from this committee. Yes. I mean, from this board. Excuse me. Oh, I'll change that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get a chance to write <laughs> that one. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to write that one before we took it apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your efforts. You're trying to get this sort thing uh, uh, She makes us think uh, whether it's in opposition. Yes. <laughs> And I, I'm sure that you're open to suggestions by your willingness to change. She listens to all of the comments and then she says, well, I'll make it from the board. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get a second before all of the discussion got uh, underway. <laughs> second is this motion. acceptable to you? Right. you right. Everything everyone said. <laughs> <laughs> well, while she's while writing, she's writing, you better put how many and who and who how do the morning and also we we'll just have it settled once and for all. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go ahead and state in there and clear up that other thing about getting statements uh, printed? They will be definitely needing these statements that the courtesy approval had already been endorsed. And but since the criteria is impossible at this time, and they won't read. don't put too much in it, please. Well, this is the quest one thought is trying to pull this through. And this other well, group. this this oh, thing she's right. bringing that's up. Is this is the best uh, affirmation of your support and loyalty there that uh, uh, they don't know that you've already supported their raise pending of the criteria, and since the criteria is impossible right now, we've got some legal things. Insurance people need statements, and there are legal implications there. We cannot print statements of, of the supplies. No, don't say that. They printed them before, and they didn't give the courtesy endorsement. 
got some poor excuses. Oh, I mean, this yeah. is another thing, though, Miss Atkins. You can't print all these labels or whatever you're talking about without they're going to support the registry. They don't have the money. Well, I was just thinking if you could just tell them you're supporting them by going ahead and clearing up this thing that's causing so much concern. Oh, uh, you mean the courtesy endorsement? Yes, ma'am. And the fact that we haven't just uh, made an unqualified courtesy endorsement. That you've already done it and affirming it there, uh, but yeah. that uh, clearing it up to the point that everybody knows how I they think, stand on it. I on. think Ms. Atkins has a point there, and I think that will influence a lot well, yeah, of people. I thought you meant just print. Oh, no, no. no I, you're I, telling them you're going to support them at one time. You're still keeping them dangling on how much well, they're supposed um, to charge. Did Miss oh, Honeycutt, well, what was that what information you that you, this material would not be available from? That's what I was told, that it had been uh, withdrawn by A&A &A and would not be available until November 67. Mm -hmm. Well, in the light of that, I move that we give a courtesy endorsement to the prosecution. Oh, you have a motion? Yeah. I have a motion that uh, mm -hmm. we're not speaking to at all. And I did, in, from the standpoint in the agenda, have some comments about the billhead, because that, too, is one of the things that I have been attacked on about, and I know nothing about it, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> that uh, the board has refused to let them type billheads, and uh, that will come out uh, uh, on the, in the agenda as relates well, to the budget. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know there's a motion on the floor. Yes, the motion on the committee to present the information. That a committee from the board be appointed by the president to write the letter to the private duty membership, read the registry. This letter to be approved by the district president. That letter in there again, you better change that to information. Information. <laughs> information. Well. information on information. <laughs> How many is going to write it? Um, a committee. Oh. Who seconded it? I seconded it. And the approval, I'd like to amend that and add it, or if it's just well agreeable, that with the approval of the executive committee, it's probably be seconded too. They are oh, I can't get around that letter to save my life. Uh, and oh. it took to that a committee from the board be appointed. Is this by the president? By the president. To write a communication regarding the registry to the private duty membership. This communication to be approved by the district president. And uh, this, it has been, the motion has been made and seconded by Ms. Stanley. Now, there was some discussion. Mrs. Uh, Hudson, you were wanting to speak to the motion. I just um, I just wondered if Ms. Wells would be willing to say, and also um, approval of the executive committee of the private duty section, or someone in the private duty section to approve. Just put somebody on. Ms. Well, Ms. Hudson's question is, uh, would you be willing to change it so that, uh, or to amend it so that the uh, executive committee of the private duty section approves it? And then they'll feel that they have to part Well, I, the, the, that's, this is from the board. This is not from the private duty section. Uh, I would think, and, and I'm not a voting member, but I would think that 
Miss Zerps could be on this committee to, to uh, do the letter or down. some private duty note. Um, I wonder if this would satisfy just to put um, with the approval of the district president and um, private duty chairman. That sounds good. Is that, is that all right, Ms. Hudson? Yes, that's fine. Good time. I'd be glad to write this so somebody can <laughs> read it. <laughs> But I won't change a single word. Let me read All right. It, uh, and then I, if you wish, you read it. A committee from the board be appointed by the president to write a communication regarding the registry to the private duty membership. This communication to be approved by the district president and private duty chairman. Is there further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Then it is carried. Now, is there further motions or discussions regarding this letter of information or this information going out to the private duty? Now, I think the chair should recognize some of the discussion we was moving in on regarding uh, bill heads. I had, uh, when had included this in the budget of the nurses' professional registry, the first thing being the management of the registry, uh, which uh, these things certainly are closely religious and uh, intertwined here, uh, the management, the budget, and uh, what is your pleasure to discuss now? Which other aspect of this? The, the thought is uh, there's two, two bits of, of thinking here apparently. Uh, that there's some question about the dues. However, uh, the uh, uh, it's we've been had it pointed out many times that the there was conflict in the state private duty section rules and the fifth district rules, which supports the the private duty nurses having established their fee. And I'm unable to understand myself what's involved with the bill heads. Now, these are normally paid for out of their fees. Out of the budget. They have established their new rate. They are, as far as I know, charging their new rate. And I'm, I'm not. I was not aware until I was honored uh, at uh, GSNA convention that we would not let them read bill heads. Now it seems to me that this is one of the things that was included in the budget to print bill heads right. from for the year and uh, I don't I personally see no reason for us to entertain this except to clarify that there are monies to print bill heads. Are there not? Yes. Uh, what is the hold up? Or the can, stipulation was <coughs> Uh, until the criteria be set up, and you don't have a criteria to include on the bill heads for the different levels of fees. But they approve the fee irrespective of criteria. Yeah. So uh, it seems to me that the bill heads would have been printed up, and to my knowledge, this should sure not come been. to the board. No, it hasn't come to the board. Uh, this was delayed until levels were set up to present uh, to right. prevent the expense of printing twice. That's so right. now we can go ahead and have them printed again. There's no levels, so well, uh, there's um, no reason. Well, well, there'll be 67 right. before we get anything to work on. It's probably clear a lot of clear the air too if we 
go ahead and give her a courtesy endorsement as was requested by the section. A courtesy approval of that. This is the third, and this is a special comment. This is the third time that this has come up. Uh, I can speak to this. I'd be willing to give up the chair, but uh, I think it is a bit erroneous. And maybe, Miss Hammond, I maybe, uh, uh, if uh, you are, uh, I believe Miss English is our first vice chairman, if I might give up and the chair and speak to this as a member of this board. Would you please? Uh, you want me to come up there? Yes. <laughs> I think uh, personally that uh, this point has been belabored to a point. Uh, I did speak as the, I was called upon to come to the private duty nurse section because the chair had lost the motion that came from the board and wished for me to speak to the membership and explain what the thinking was about uh, levels. The I thought it was a bit interesting that the literature is a field of this. Uh, AJN has had discussion. It's also interesting to know that the lady who made the motion to increase the fee had just come from California, I believe, in which they do have such a program. Uh, that is, uh, some levels. This is not a new thing. Uh, ANA had some publication on it in the AJN of August of 1965, I believe. I believe the private duty section uh, did attempt to get some of these uh, at some times after they did not receive courtesy endorsement of their fee. But the, the thinking I am sure that came out of this 104 nurses, or approximately 104 nurses, that I was, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Uh, I, I was speaking from the standpoint of the information I'd read in the journal by nature of being a member of the advisory committee to the registry committee not as president of this organization, not as a director of nurses, but uh, we had uh, many and numerous uh, bits of data, periodicals, regarding uh, guidelines and regarding levels of performance for private practice nurse. I had read these to be more informed as a member of the advisory committee I think the thing I'm wishing to say here that I think that uh, this discussion again, this call meeting, and how many hours have we spent on this issue, uh, that it is it is really almost uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know quite the word. I, I think that uh, I personally am being asked to rescind all of the work we've done this year uh, over um, our, all of our stands, and uh, which I, I personally took, again, on principles. And uh, I, it would certainly be against my principle as a member of this board to come after at this late date with no evidence of work and say, uh, uh, yes, we endorse that, which we could not see fit to endorse way back under in May or June. <coughs> Madam Chairman, I'd like to speak in support of what Miss uh, 
Pope has just said, I think we're, um, well, it's hard to say exactly what you want to without, uh, seeing that you're talking about something maybe that you don't know too much about. I think we're missing a chance. I think private duty nursing is missing a great chance here, and that is to uh, upgrade all of their practice in that even before we get these things back from A and A on levels. I mean, this is something that could be done by the section and just on a simple basis, uh, one fee for an evening nurse, one fee for a night nurse, and another fee for a day nurse. Isn't this a practice in hospital nursing? Oh, and rather than backing a blanket increase or a blanket whatever salary, I think it was mentioned before when this came up that there were many people who, uh, in private practice, who certainly earned $30 for eight hours. But we all know that there's some, and whether you're in private duty nursing, whether you're in public health, or whether you're teaching, or whatever you're doing, there's some who have not... Uh, further prepared themselves and so they don't get the better jobs. So why should the private duty nurse who is preparing herself and working hard to take good care of her patient, why should she be paid on the same level as a nurse who has a private practitioner who has not done one thing in 20 years to uh, really better prepare herself. I think that a certain group of private duty nurses are going to be hurt by this blanket increase which has happened over the years. In other agencies, in other agencies, uh, the people who work the hardest and try the hardest get the uh, advances. And I think it's a chance for the private duty nurses who are doing a real good job to get the better advances as they should have without having to drag along the people who are not really uh, doing the best Mr. they can. Mr. if this has to do with uh, the discussion on the uh, private duty nurses or the uh, management of the registry, we'll entertain the uh, speaker. Otherwise, uh, I do not believe that we have this thing concerning the courtesy raise on our agenda. And this would not be uh, legal at, in this meeting for us to discuss it. The meeting was called for management of registry, budget of nurses professional registry, set the date of regular business meeting and adjourn. Those are the items included in our call if you have your card in the meeting. Madam Chairman, I know that it had been discussed about the statement or anything. I know as chairman of the printing committee, I was on the spot and I wondered what we should do about it. And I get many calls in the office there. So, mm -hmm. Ms. Pope's go on answer mm -hmm. takes care of that. Mm -hmm. It is part of the budget. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there other business that relates to the budget? We have not approved the budget. What is uh, your... We've had a budget presented. It was delayed. Well, Madam Chairman, as I see it, as the treasurer, until we get the...
pull back from the private duty nurses, I think, again, that we would be wasting our time to talk about a budget, uh, you know, and to more definite plans, and, and definite plans cannot be set up until we know where we're standing. So I move, or that is, uh, don't move, but I just suggest that uh, until we get back this return, and it's full, then work from there. I don't see how you can work otherwise. May I ask how appropriate is it that the registry committee propose a budget to this board? They don't. The uh, finance committee proposes the budget to the uh, board, and you cannot do it until you know what you're working with. But in this instance, whereby we're, um, we're pooling or collecting data, uh, could this, and, and I'm, I'm raising the question here, could this committee, in that they've already done some groundwork, actually, with suggestions, these are suggestions, yes. be submitted for consideration? Again, I don't think you've got to have a, a, a framework to know what you're, you're working a budget up for. And we don't have the framework. Well, I think the thing that concerns us is it's now November 21. Pardon? It is now November 21st. And uh, I don't know when the dues start arriving. Statement should uh, be sent now. For the fees. Ordinarily. They are sent about this time. They've been waiting for this, bo uh, you know, for the board to meet and to uh, authorize what the dues were to be to send them out. And uh, it was suggested $50 by Miss uh, Honeycutt and by Miss Wales, so the bills could go out for that amount. And they'll also be told that on in that letter. The, the fee thing. is $50. Yes, because that's what uh, Miss Wells mm -hmm. has on her recommendation, yes. $50. Mm -hmm. And then Miss uh, Honeycutt suggested the same thing in what she gave was the $50 so the registrars could go ahead and send the bill heads. And there will be money to run the early part of the year that it would give the board uh, an opportunity to get this pool and to take care of all of it in the January meeting, because you meet the early part of January. May I ask, though, should, with this remaining money, should there be some effort to curtail the full operation until we know? I, I'm asking for information, uh, not just of you, but of all of the members of the board. The mm -hmm. activity should have to curtail by the first of January, starting the first of February, won't we? When our board meeting is January, you see, 9. this grant was uh, was asked for under our present setup, and until January, if we live up to what we asked for, then it must stand as it is to January. Yes. Say. So, and your suggestion is that we can carry on the month of January yes. with our own funds, operational right. funds, and right. take care of the right. budget January 9th. There'll be, there'll be money for that. And in the meantime, the dues, no doubt, will start coming in, or at least we'll have it pooled to know whether they want it or they don't want it. And as far as I'm concerned, dissolve it. That letter of communication, yes. excuse me, could save a lot of postage if it just went out with the statements in addition to those on the uh, registry that we send the, the balance, you know, when she checked. I could go ahead and address them. She could put her statements in with it. That's right. And yeah. even if they didn't want to renew right now to return it immediately so you could estimate it, it would save a good bit of about $25 worth of postage. That would dilute and those it. Diluted, though, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Seems to me it would. 
delivery. Oh, it would necessarily mean they'd have to send the dues in right now. They still have a limited time, but I it think, would give you an idea. Well, well I, I think since that recommendation is made, we should carry out the recommendation and let the register take care of the dues. That, uh, I believe there's some, some comments that uh, it does maybe take from the effect of the letter. And it wasn't in the original motion unless we wanted to make another one. Uh, I wonder if there'd be any way to uh, permit uh, sustaining membership on the registry. There might be some people that would like to uh, contribute to the operation. Could we say if we anyone wished to, they could make a, they could become a sustaining member. And that means you, if you wanted to support it, you could. That's right. She got me out of a picture to hear about. Pull the new one out of the There isn't any such rule. We would have to go to the bylaw committee, I guess. I don't know. Write a new rule. They'd have to be in private use section. Well, it's contributing you somebody. Whether you want to call them a member or not. Yeah, because it'd be no advantage to them really being a member if it was just somebody wanted to contribute. I think there'd be some that would uh, be interested enough to contribute something to the operation of the registry. Even though it is. It is. It's back to you. I haven't heard of any organization that couldn't accept a gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. send in a check and, uh, to the official uh, the funds of the official register and Mark it to, the to register. support the private duty nurses and leave it leave it out of the, the board just let it be as a friend mm -hmm. just like we received that grant as a friend it was not uh, may I ask a question about the grant is it uh, limited to the 1st of January with the money contributed. Um, $8,000 in four equal payments of 2000 each month. Oh, so we still have so if there's there some there. left, we could uh, yes. go ahead. Yes. There is some left, and uh -huh. we had some at the yes. time. That's the reason why I say that there will be money to continue. The first mm -hmm. part that we can send out our recommendations and take care of this business of this meeting and then go from there. Does that meet with the members' approval? All in agreement that uh, we delay budget until January 9th? Yeah. Until we decide whether we're going to need a budget or not. <laughs> uh, that seems reasonable. <laughs> Is there any uh, dissent on this that we need to maintain? Or other ideas or thoughts? That's all we can do, I think. All right, then by hand move, Madam Chairman, we adjourn. Well, I had one more item on I'm the sorry. agenda, and that is uh, I do need the board's thinking at the regular meeting for the association on uh, uh, 10th. It's the can't 10th. find it. November 10th. Uh, I understand that uh, there were 21 members 
present that there was a program and that Mrs. Garland did uh, open the uh, meeting, introduce the uh, program person to introduce the uh, guest speaker and ask for a uh, date to adjourn uh, uh, to adjourn for a, a later date for a business meeting and the members did not give that were in attendance did not give a meeting date uh, for that regular business session. I checked with our parliamentarian and she says that um, we can record this, have a secretary record the actual situation and uh, that uh, in view of the fact that there was not a quorum, that no business was transacted, nor uh, another date established for a business meeting. And if this uh, does meet with the board's approval, uh, then we will leave it as be, uh, unless the board feels that there should be a business meeting to replace that date. Madam Chairman, so far as I know, there is no business that needs to be taken care of before our regularly scheduled uh, January the 12th meeting, and I move that uh, our next meeting day be our regular meeting January the 12th. All right. We have the motion that we have. Testing one, two, three. This will be a test. Three, two, one. This will be a recording of the meeting of the Executive Board, 5th District, November 21, 1966. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss management of the registry, set the time of the meeting for the regular business meeting. attention, I will call the uh, special call meeting to order. At this time, uh, before we have our roll call, I wonder, Ms. Wells, if you'll uh, return prayer for us, please. Heavenly Father, guide us in our deliberations that we may make wise decisions that will meet the needs of our patients. We humbly ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you. In the absence of our secretary, our elected secretary, we will I've asked uh, Ms. Atkins to serve as secretary. And uh, at this time, we'll have the roll call. Ms. Hope. Craven. You think Ms. Craven? Damn it. Ms. Rogers is out of town. Ms. Meese? Present. Ms. Garland? Ms. Lexley? Present. Ms. Wells? Present. Mr. Lewis Mary? Ms. Graves? Ms. Stanley? Ms. Mallory? Ms. Rosecrans? Present. Ms. Rosewood? Ms. Langton, Ms. Hasty, here. Ms. Zur, here. And Ms. Honeycutt, here. Very good. We're delighted to have those of you who could attend today. Uh, we do have many of our members absent, but we've heard from some of them saying that they could not make the uh, meeting today, but we do have a quorum, so we will proceed with the business. Uh, as your uh, notice did indicate, the purpose of the meeting 
because as relates to the management of the registry and budget uh, for the professional registry. I would like to try to bring to the members, I think, uh, where we are to with this, uh, as we had the budget for the uh, annual budget brought to the membership of the board, uh, it was decided that at that time we could not uh, actually deal with a budget until we knew where we were going, whether or not the registry would be maintained and supported uh, in calls and in membership. So uh, we uh, have not dealt with the budget for 1967 for the professional registry, nor are we uh, uh, in a position, uh, have we been in a position to talk about the continued uh, operation and management of the professional registry. So uh, this is the point as to where we are to. At the last board meeting, when this came to the group, uh, or it, as we discussed it, uh, I believe it appropriate to say that we delayed action and decided to have a special call meeting awaiting any further developments as relates to the uh, community council uh, uh, committee which had been appointed to uh, try to establish the community needs for a registry and any uh, recommendations from this committee. Uh, the board, I uh, uh, would say, is fortunate in that uh, two of the persons here, other than myself, have been on that committee, Ms. Wells and uh, Ms. Honeycutt. And uh, I really, uh, I suppose, uh, I suppose to get this discussion going and, and would ask them to share with, with the members what came out of the last uh, meeting, which was last Tuesday evening uh, with the community council. Ms. Wells, uh, you want to A great many summarize? things were discussed, as I saw it. The first uh, session had to do with the problems that uh, confronted uh, the community and the uh, nurses in the community. And the second discussion, as I saw it, had to do with possible solutions. And I, no uh, solution was really reached. A good many things were uh, batted around. And uh, our chairman uh, was to compile the thinking um, of the group, as was discussed in the meeting, and um, summarize it and send it out to each member um, for reaction and their feelings is toward what might possibly be a solution. So really nothing has been decided. I mean nothing has, no real suggestion has come about. Uh, one of the things that was discussed a good bit and, and um, was the possibility of requiring uh, nurses to that did belong to hospital registries to also belong to the fifth district registry, and then the question of the legality of that uh, came up and. Um, I'm not sure how the group felt. That was just one thing that came from one member. 
and um, and requiring membership in organizations uh, came up. And one person said, well, if in a hospital you required um, people to belong to professional organizations, then you would also have to require other professional people in the hospital to, to do likewise. And I, I felt the feeling there was, and my, maybe my personal feeling influenced it, that uh, it really could not be a requirement. It has to be an elective thing, and my the other people can discuss that point if they like. May, may I change? Uh, when the membership committee met in A and A a couple of years ago, that came up from Nebraska and Wisconsin and two other states. They wanted to make it mandatory in renewing your state license that membership be required, and it's illegal. The only profession that can do that legally is the law profession itself. At, that, at least that was the ruling and the statement made by the uh, uh, council for the uh, a and &E. Well, that was my personal feeling, and uh, I mean, regardless of whether it was a law, that it should not be mandatory. But um, <clears throat> then the point of real law did come up, and it was to be investigated by someone that was in a position to get some legal advice. That was in relation to having all the nurses belong to the registry, wasn't it? Yeah, the legality it's whether that, that would be legal. Well, I would to share with the group for the benefit of those who have this. just come in. We're discussing the uh, management of the registry, and at this particular point, the members on the community council committee <coughs> are sharing with members uh, that which came out of the last meeting. There were there was one thing that kept coming up over and over and over again at both meetings, and it's expressed so well right here that I'd like to just read this. It says, the central registry must have authority to determine to some extent the utilization of nurses. It should be able to demand of nurses a fair and equitable arrangement in selection of cases. It should demand certain basic qualifications of the nurses and should have the power to classify nurses according to their ability to care for certain type cases. It would seem that no central agency would be effective without these basic controls. Who said that? Uh, this came up over and over again. This was just summarized. Uh -huh. In other words, you wrote that from... No, I didn't write oh, it. This is part of the report minutes. report of the committee, mm -hmm. I see. And the um, <coughs> effect of uh, hospital selection of people that work in a particular hospital, I believe um, that the general feeling was, now somebody can correct me if they want to, that that did definitely have its advantages, the same group working together over and over again. And uh, to me, I don't see any conflict in a nurse belonging to the central re registry and also belonging to a hospital, I'll call it a call list. There is no conflict there. It's when you can belong to just yes. one that the conflict mm -hmm. comes in. And um, th then again, I do believe it's the hospital's prerogative to establish their own um, standards and um, do their own selection if they so choose. And the, the question of uh, if it were not mandatory about how many people would be left to support a central registry uh, came up. And um, I believe in the last board meeting, I, I feel like if we go into a new year, that we need to know exactly what we can depend on money-wise so we'll know how to plan the operation of the registry. 
there was the feeling expressed that there might be a need for a central registry to as a uh, to service the smaller hospitals that could not have their own call lists and uh, nursing homes in the community and homes and also to be a depository is that a good word <laughs> for reservoir. records reservoir for uh, that was the word that was used for uh, records uh, of the private duty nurses their in-service programs and uh, uh, of uh, other pertinent information concerning private duty and there was the feeling it was brought up over and over again that there must be some type of ongoing in-service program for private duty nurses to uh, keep them up with current trends and uh, so that they can function more effectively with the critically ill patients to meet the needs. If I might just add to, uh, it's, and you all were there, and if I would hope my interpretation is right, that the this committee really has tried to establish, is there a need for a registry? It's not, there. of course, all of the uh, pros and cons of every kind of registry is entered in, it, the committee feels that it must make a recommendation uh, regarding the, the validity uh, uh, for a uh, central registry. And I believe that the tone is that there is a need, but uh, the consensus, I think, is that um, not in the present light of, of a, a registry that is uh, supported uh, in the same manner that the professional registry is supported. And to the extent that uh, the, uh, the chair stated that, uh, and I, I bring this to you because I think it's significant that if the nurses won't have their own registry, that's up to them. <laughs> this was stated twice. Mm -hmm. And of course, my comment both of the times uh, that we've met is, what do the nurses who do private practice nursing want? It's very good and well for the community council to say we'll run a registry but if the private duty nurses do not wish to uh, uh, register with the community council, it's the same problem as if we here, the membership of this group, elect to continue the operation of the professional registry. Uh, does the private duty nurse, uh, are they electing to continue to serve? I believe St. Joseph's has said, have said that they were going to stay with the professional registry as long as it's in existence. If that would help. Would you and Mrs. Uh, Wells agree that this group really must make the decision about its future without being involved with the community council from um, what we've gotten thus far from well, that committee? Uh, there, to me, I kept hearing uh, that there may be two, two other types or two other groups or something that are maybe one other group that might open a registry, but the suggestions uh, were that uh, it would be operated by uh, groups of people from the lay profession and uh, medical profession, and they would be the board, in other words. And then it came out that uh, 
there was the feeling that nurses should direct um, nursing. I heard this too, so it would seem to me that I personally feel like nurses should be directing nursing. We could have an advisory committee made up of these people to our board, but I feel that it should be kept as a professional register if we're going to have one. I feel very strongly personally about uh, continuing a professional uh, registry because we are a big city and we are a big community. But um, the fact that we cannot uh, maintain usual service with the membership at the low ebb that it is right now, the money just doesn't go around. And whether to cut down on the service and um, see what support it has from private duty nurses. Uh, I, I hate to give it up, but uh, still you can kind of see the handwriting on the wall because for the last six months, is that right, we've been running on, well, not borrowed money because we don't have to pay it back, as I understand well, it, it's but nice money format. that was um, not um, um, given by the private duty nurse in support of the registry. There were just not enough members to support the services that we had um, offered. I feel that um, a letter to each prospective registrant and then a direct uh, re reply um, as to whether they wished to support the registry or not would <coughs> give us a basis for knowing what we could do because we can't go very far unless there is some money to go on. Madam Chairman, I have a report. I don't know whether it's in order to give it now so that as we talk we can think about these things. Uh, we have not had a registry committee meeting, but I put together, I called all the registry committee members <coughs> except one that I was not able to reach to get their feelings. And so I have written a report uh, as to what we might be able to do, what suggestions, <coughs> if you'd like to hear it at this time. May I ask, too, has private duty met since, did they have yes, an annual meeting? Yes, ma'am. And we were not, we haven't been considered, we haven't been told anything other than that they were going to uh, suggest, I mean, this board suggested that um, Ms. Honeycutt and I be on that committee. I don't know why I was left off, but I understand they talked to that month security woman down at the convention, and she says by all means that the, um, the elected chairman or the elected officer should represent private duty on any committee got private duty, is concerned about private duty and anything that pertains to her, either the elected officer should or the section themselves should elect somebody and the, to represent them. And from my understanding, this was not done. I do not know how the committee was appointed, but I never received the notice. Therefore, I didn't, certainly didn't go to the meeting. And I don't know what and how it was done. But it's certainly just somebody selecting a private duty nurse was not coming from the section. Well, my feeling uh, was that uh, 
probably the committee was sponsored by the community council who has been sponsoring the operation of the registry financially, not otherwise. I think they want to be helpful. But, um, and how they arrived at their um, invitation, I, I do not know. No, oh, I, I gave the board all of the details that I had on this, uh, I believe last meeting mm -hmm. or the meeting before. Was it last meeting? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yes, sir, it's not true. Uh, so, we haven't been asked anything or told anything yet. We're the ones that's involved the most. Well, I believe Ms. Honeycutt and Ms. Wells will bear out that I mm -hmm. said this at both of the community Indeed. council meetings. There were two private duty nurses present. And, yes, I know uh, they were, but I'll say they were not elected by the private duty section. Yes. They were elected by the, duty. the chair of the committee. And had I been put on the committee and I could not have attended, certainly the next officer should, the first vice chairman should have been the one to have gone. But uh, nevertheless, <coughs> we ignored altogether about that part of it. Well, this is why I have concluded or made the concluding statement, Ms. Ertz, that I think the board needs to decide whether or not it's going to maintain a professional registry through 5th District, uh, uh, this organization, rather than continue to be concerned with the community, what the community council is going mm -hmm. to do. May I ask a question, just for my own information? I went away from the last meeting feeling that this board had nothing to do with that, with who went on that committee. Is that that's right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. They just suggested name, but the lady from A and A was saying that that nobody should represent private duty, but either an elected officer or that the section themselves elect somebody. But this is the sort of thing that we'll probably get into if we work with this group more and more. In other words, they ignored the suggestions that were made. Apparently, this is just what I'm gathering. Mm -hmm. The co and community council and... It was not wise to let an outside, uh, or to make sure that no outside organization came in and, and, and gave the instructions as to how to operate everything. And I didn't think that was intended in the first place, was it? Well, this is how we got into this. I'll go over it again. Uh, the community council was charged with the responsibility of, of uh, paying the bills through, for the remainder of the year and to establish a committee to determine uh, the need to continue possibly to provide financial support or to afford financial support. The uh, community council is made up of uh, not just lay persons of the, si of the community, it has, uh, happens to have a physician. And as he was involved with this, at about the same time, the private duty nurse group, individuals and groups, had appealed to the Fulton County Medical Society to uh, do what they could to get uh, the hospitals using the registry. And uh, they had established a nursing committee, which is not the publicized nursing committee. This is a special committee to, that was assigned this particular responsibility. So the chair of that, their elected chair, to work to help do what they could to solve the registry problems got involved with the physician on the community council from what I can hear and uh, he ended up being chair of the community council committee. Mm -hmm. So uh, our communications uh, and our dealings here is uh, uh, apparently what has caused the mix-up. The community council representative who was appointed checked with me and I in turn checked with the board to have the elected private duty people represented on the community council. But because of the involvement somehow is with the private duty nurses appealing to the Fulton County Medical Society individually and in 
different types of groups. They I moved don't know in. About that part of it. Well, this is all I've been told, and I've mm -hmm. shared what I know with the board. So uh, the committee is, and the community council actually does have the right, I suppose, to name anyone they wish on the committee. And as I see it, a nurse has a right to serve on the community council regardless of her background. Now, this is why I say uh, and concluded that community council cannot, or this is not a community council. Uh, uh, we're getting nowhere there as relates to 5th district. Mm -hmm. The nurses still may have their registry. No one can tell them they cannot. And uh, it, it is, uh, uh, I think think it we come back to saying that uh, where where we are. I do not believe that the community council committee will recommend that someone give funds to support fifth district private duty registry. Uh, I'm positive that this is going to come out. Not from as the, it works. Uh, comments made thus far in committee. So we're, uh, I think this, and I, I'm, these are the facts as I know them as to how the committee came to be. Ms. Pope, what was the uh, route that this committee would take? Did they say that they would have no more meetings or that it should go back to the nurses? The, the committee has a responsibility to make a report to the community council and thereby to the donor of their recommendations. And as I and see it now, envision now, they will recommend that there is a need for a registry, but they will put stipulations that this be controlled by a board of directors uh, with an advisory committee and in no way is the same registry as we would know it. In other words, they will not recommend, I do not believe, at this point, that the donor continue to give money is to run the nurse's professional registry. Is this uh, That's right. That's why I read this particular thing, because that spells it out very clearly, what they say. I didn't get it the first go around. I just didn't get it the first go around. A professional registry under the American Nurses Association is nationwide. I hate for us not to have one, but we still have to have money enough to keep it open. And who shall furnish that money is the big question. It has been in the past uh, from dues from individual registrants. They may still be willing to support it. Uh, we don't know this, if I might inject this. We don't know what private duty nurses wish. Each year, may I ask for information, when it's supported by the private duty nurses, haven't they had financial problems for some time in that each year they had to, what, assist the members? Is that correct? Only since George Baptist left the registry have we had financial difficulty. May I make one statement, Madam Chairman, in the consultant A&E, their dues are fifty dollars. The national average is sixty dollars. And once, or in sending out statements, they were told that in, in the latter part of the year, if it was absolutely necessary, in which to maintain it, that they would assess them not to exceed fifteen dollars. That's correct, isn't it, Miss Miss That was just one year. One year, yes. But that's when the dues were thirty-five. Yes. So uh, they still are not um, um, excessive as far as the national average. There's a more. Mm -hmm. I, I 
delay you on your giving your report. I was interested to bring first is from anything from private duty search. You all had your meeting in October mm -hmm. and there was no discussion. You have nothing to share with the board related to uh, We just discussed that there was was to that committee was to been appointed and um, I said that I had not been appointed to it and then one of the other girls was there that had been appointed and she didn't seem to know how she got appointed on the committee. Well, I don't know either. I don't think anybody here no, knows. No, no. <laughs> That's the feeling well, I got at the last ready. meeting that mm -hmm. nobody here knew how. Because the board had appointed you and Miss Hancock. I know they did. Mm -hmm. And the same said we were here, you that this registry committee <coughs> suggestions or recommendations? Well, they're just suggestions because we didn't have a meeting so we could get recommendations. Um, at the special call meeting of the executive board on August 8, 1966, the following motion was made. The 5th District Board suggests to the registry committee to cut down the hours and the number of registrars to reduce the expenses of running the registry and reducing the rent to allow the present available funds to keep the registry open the rest of the year. It was at this meeting that the referendum vote was taken to close the registry from 11 to 7. This has created no problem. After receiving the grant, the first motion was not as urgent. However, now that the end of the year is approaching, a decision is in order. There was no quorum at the October 25th Registry Committee meeting. Those present discussed the possibilities for keeping the registry open to cover community needs, even though the hospitals had their own call lists. In an effort to conform to the board's request and to bring to this board some ideas of what might be done, your registry chairman telephoned all members of the committee in an effort to get feelings and suggestions about what might be done. The following is a resume of ideas. Registry hours be cut to one shift, nine to five. Answering service to be used from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. at 1850 per month. There would be also a $5 charge for phone installation and a fee of $1.63 added to the phone bill per month. I have called, uh, I've forgotten the man's name, Mr. Thomas, I believe, and he is sending a letter with uh, this in it to confirm the telephone conversation. This uh, service would uh, be like a call service. Um, they would take uh, the nurses available at 5 p.m. and when the hospitals called in, they would fill the calls. When nurses came off uh, duty or if there were a death or anything, they would call the nurses. They would just carry on a call service those hours. Uh, Mrs. Kellum, who is retiring, may be willing to relief, relieve off days up to $1,500 per year. And I believe, according to our little manual in the registry, $20 per day is the relief registrar. Uh, per year. Ms. Kellum, who is retiring, may be willing to relieve for off days up to $1,500 per year. A relief registrar would need to be found to relieve for vacations, sick leave, and extra 35 days. Uh, that's over what Ms. Kellum could relieve. Days unless the 9 to 5 registrar would like to work the extra days and earn $617 extra per year. Membership fee is to be $50 for registrants, $25 for associate membership, and the associate membership would be part-time people, weekends,
people on hospital call lists, new graduates, and members registering after July 1st. Register to remain at present address for now. The material from ANA concerning levels of private duty nursing has been recalled. This was told to me. It will be November 1967 before the material is available to the private duty committee to set up levels. Uh, we need to know what must be done about printing bill heads. This was delayed until levels were set up to prevent uh, the expense of printing twice. The director of the registry, now these are some figures, now makes $410 a month, which would be $4,920. If she worked an extra 35 days at $20.50 per day, it would come to $617. The relief registrar uh, for one day per week, six holidays, and the 17 extra days to get her $1,500 then there would need to be a relief for vacation and sick leave, uh, $1,000 allowed in the budget for that. And then uh, there needs to be a public relations program at the registry so that word of mouth does not distribute what happens and what changes are made uh, and current things that private duty nurses need to know about. And uh, therefore, uh, $500 for secretarial service in case it's needed when there's just one registrar there. Uh, from August through December, the total expenses just estimated would come to about $8,312.92 the balance in the bank in August was $4,352.62. The grant was $8,000. It comes to $12,352.62. And the, to subtract the expenses, $8,312.92. It probably will be about $4,000 left in the bank at the end of the year. If the 375 members who belong to the registry now join again at $50, there would be $18,750 coming in, and that would make a total of $22,750 for next year. That's against, that would be a budget of $12,853.55 uh, instead of the $20, the $20,228.99 that was suggested. Most of the committee, am I right now? Most of this committee has. Yes, uh, this and is they the support this kind of uh, yes. program. Madam Chairman, I wonder if it would be in order to mimeograph a letter to possible registrants and. Um, give the proposed uh, what could, might possibly be if there were enough registrants and uh, ask for a reply to find out how the private duty nurses feel about keeping the registry open. I wonder um, if people in general know <coughs> that uh, the registry has been kept open with a grant 
do you happen to know? No, sir. Yes, it's been announced. But I mean, there are a lot of people that don't get to the meeting, and I just wonder if people in general know what the situation well, I know the one is. That's what I meant by a public relations program. We really need to get out of it. Do you remember approximately how many were at your last meeting? I think about 30, 27. Up to 375. I'd like to move that a um, mimeograph letter of explanation be sent to each possible registrant asking for a reply in regard to their anticipated support of the registry. What would the word possible be? Would it be those who are currently members? Well, now, uh, possible means that if there are enough to support a registry, it can be kept open if there are not. Well, then that, that, that I just don't know. Well, I, I mean, just wonder where you would get the possible one, should it be uh, defined in some way? Well, that's what I was wondering, to spell it out like well, that, because um, there'd be no need to for a fifth district registry, it would be the, num the members in the fifth district that are private duty nurses. Well, that's what I thought to yeah. spell it out rather than the expense of sending it to all nurses in the 5th district. Mm -hmm. uh, well, private duty nurses. nurses. Well, that's what mm -hmm. I thought was my thinking. So all them private duty nurses, nurses, not just the ones that had been uh, are on the that are currently right supporting it, but to include all private duty <coughs> nurses that would be in the expense. Is there a second to this motion? If it goes to all, I'd be glad to accept that. If it doesn't go to all, I wouldn't be interested in it because I don't think it would be a fair thing. You to all, all, the all nurses, all private duty nurses. All private duty nurses. Yes, yes, I know that's what you're saying, and that's, that's would be. Uh, right. That's right. 446, 443 to 3 associates. Madam Chairman, I uh, expressed myself before about this, and uh, my opinion has certainly not changed in the least. I think that this district has enjoyed a reputation and been given credit for operating a community registry when the district itself has not participated very much in it except to just let it come through the boat. And um, I, uh, I, for one, feel that um, as, a, as a professional organization, we, it, I feel that we should operate a registry. I think it'd be, um, we'd be remiss and our professional responsibilities if we don't operate the registry. But I, I certainly think that um, everyone should uh, support it. All members should support it. And if all members supported it, uh, then we could do all the things that uh, Ms. Honeycutt has mentioned here in order to put, the, put our house in order if we had some money in there. I, I personally think the entire district ought to support it. And I, for one, am perfectly willing to contribute voluntarily or any way you want to handle it. But I certainly do think that we'd be remiss in our professional responsibilities if we do not give every assistance and help to keep this registry open and going because the people um, call it. They know they can call. It's listed. Rightly so in the telephone book and they can get um, help when they need it and 
I think it would be one, it'd just be a disaster as far as I could see it uh, to not, to, and of course that's not related directly to Miss Wells' motion, but it does come back to the question that you mentioned that we've got to make the decision whether we operate a register or not. It's up to this district. Is that what you said? Are you asking me? Mm -hmm. I, I see this as our responsibility, yes. Well, then I think we, we have to make a decision that we, that um, whether we're going to do it or not. And um, I, um, I, I think that probably this letter would be a step in the right direction, but it certainly would need to be very carefully worded if I got a letter with iffy, iffy, iffy in it. I don't know whether I'd want to say I'd join or not. And uh, I think it should have the strong support of this board and a strong declaration that this board would support it and uh, encourage it and uh, if it doesn't have that, it's not uh, uh, just a letter to the the, uh, the nurses themselves. Now they can, um, and this has um, been mentioned, that they themselves can establish uh, a call system of their own. They can list themselves in the telephone book, is for that matter. And it's done in many cities. You take, uh, Chicago and New York, the large cities, um, the nurses, uh, uh, they have a section in the classified, in the classified telephone directory, and they list them as registered nurses, just like the doctors are listed, so they could establish their calls. And, um, but I, I feel that uh, as the professional organization in the district that, um, that we have a responsibility as a board and as a district to, to operate this picture. That's the way I feel about it. I think the idea of the letter is good, but it's not going to do very much good unless you can unless you can have some uh, declaration, strong declaration of support for this board. I, I, frankly, I, I would love to see, uh, and I felt this all the time, I felt uh, guilty to um, say that the district um, operated the register when I knew that it was paid for by a private university. And um, I think that every nurse in the district should. I think it should be operated by the district and paid for by the district, so that's the way I feel about it. But I'm certainly, any way that we can keep it open and going, I certainly would like to see it because I think we do have a responsibility to the community as a professional organization. Well, of course, may I say something? I don't have a right to say a word, but let me tell you all something from the other side just a second. When Mother had the last stroke, the only way I could turn, Dr. Barry says, get a nurse. The only way I could do was go to the phone book. That was Fifth District Nurses Registry, you see, listed. And when the person answered the phone, it was Margaret Brandenburg, and I knew her. And then all my problems just seemed to be solved. But you see what you would get into if you just called a nurse. You wouldn't know them from Adam's house cat. And well, I'm this not way, educating I know it, but I mean, this uh, way, do you see what it would mean to the person who, who calls it? I, I, I just had to get let you see that side of it for a minute. I think it's very wonderful that we've had uh, 
Well, the professional practice. register is lost if it isn't kept under the nurses and the, and the executive board as heads. That's right. Now that uh, we're just you know the community council you can accept and and use what they've said if if it's usable. But I think it still should be right with the executive board. Otherwise, I'm not interested in it, and I feel like I'm wasting my time. I if we can't come to some solution here uh, that's going to solve it. To belong to the 5th District Register. You don't need lay people to solve it. Mm -hmm. Seems to me uh, right. should be yeah, I honor. don't mean you, because your point's no, good. No, my See? point was that you need uh, you. That's what I know. <laughs> Your point to make good. us feel safe. That's right. If um, the organization uh, exercises its obligation of screening the people that are permitted to be on the registry, in other words, putting their stamp of approval on the person, maybe we sometimes have been remiss and um, on that score, but that would be a definite advantage in a professional registry. As far as state registration is concerned, that's one criteria that you use to uh, judge by if you're thinking about trying to get a high class nurse. Uh, but then the professional um, organization should add another stamp of approval on that particular person and for that reason I would speak in favor of maintaining a professional registry. I, uh, let me read this and see if you want to consider it and I don't know whether I've said what I meant to say or not. I move that a letter of information be sent to all private duty nurses belonging to the 5th district regarding the status of the registry and asking for a reply stating whether they would support the professional registry if finances uh, permit it to operate. May I ask a question regarding this motion? Who would write the letter? Who would approve it and so forth? Who would be responsible for getting the letter out? I think that we need to be sure that uh, the group most vitally concerned are, are uh, approve of the letter, that it says what they want it to say. Uh, may I say something else? Uh, two or three things here. I think I can keep them in mind. It seems that I think we're all going to have to express our opinion whether we do it aloud or not. Uh, the one question we haven't really answered is, how valuable to me as a professional nurse is a professional registry? Because you get, and if you're going to go into your own pocketbook, you've got to get down to how you feel about it. How valuable is this to me? I agree with uh, the feeling that I get from most of the people, and that is we don't want to turn this registry over to the community council. And uh, I don't have a lot of money. But I wouldn't mind to contribute something if we could work it out so that everybody would be agreeable and it would be on an equal basis and everybody would uh, have some portion of their dues that would go to support this. If this is what it's going to take to keep it, is it that valuable to us? Do we want it that much? Seems like that's a question that we're going to have to answer. Well, that recommendation has been made twice. I ask a question in relation to this. How are registries in other states supported? Or does anybody know? Well, in some states, they have one central office. And I don't mean that the re registry and the district's in the same room. I mean they have a joint, joint office. office. And the district pays half the rent, and the registry pays half the rent. In some places, they share a secretary, and the secretary's salary is split, and the overhead is split. Um, the registrar is paid out of the registry's funds, and the executive secretary out of the district's funds. 
He's many times the executive secretary and the head registrar is one person. Then there are people, registrars, who work. Uh, she's the boss, in other words. Uh, and then there are other registrars who work the shifts or in some places there are non-professional people who do the calling. There are all sorts of ways that it's done. And this would that would mean really that the district is would be carrying part of the expenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or something. In other words, this why this should we have big a big overhead for a registry? And I'm not saying this for any person. I'm just asking this here. And why should we have a big office for a, a little office <laughs> for me, for the executive secretary? Why should we maintain two big offices if we could get a bigger office and reduce the expenses? May I answer that question? Yeah, I'd like when to When Ms. Dolan was me. president, and this was brought up before, we went to the Candler Building, we went to the Peachtree Apartments down there, we went to a number of places, and no place could we find. We pay rent sixty-three fifty, which is a reduced rate in our building, the fifth district, and we have a lease till September. Uh, the lease has already been filed, and, and our lease will not be up until September. The uh, uh, places that we found would, would not be suitable, on, um, for instance, to put the registry in the Healy building, the heat goes off in the afternoons on Saturdays and Sundays, and I know because I was down there yesterday. In fact, I almost got a ticket out there. They decided now to, to tag you on, on Sundays. Uh, it would be ideal under the right circumstances to have the registry and the 5th District combined. It is a complete, absolutely impossible to combine them in the small office that we have in either place under any circumstances. Now, I was running the menu graph. I'm giving you a little illustration of this. I was in the office running these on uh, Thursday. I was there from 1 till 6.30 that evening, and at 5.30, the answering service called, and, uh, well, I was running the calendar, to be exact, and that, making a correct an error. And she called at 5.30 and said that I had a telephone message at 3.37 from Miss Rogers that she was going out of town. Running the machine in that small office, I did not even hear the telephone, and I hear well. But it would be absolutely impossible for another person. I don't mean in that office, because no. I wouldn't work down there hardly by myself. But I it know, how same. much rent do we pay at the Henry Gray? How many do they pay at the but everybody knows that place at the Henry Grady, the whole city of Atlanta. It's an established place with them. Um, oh, well, I'm... I don't think that's a good enough you don't reason think that's to keep that. <laughs> of course, well, you got to have some place where the red, well, we're not going to hang by at night. I started, so you got to have some place where they don't be afraid to stay. That was, as I understood, one And as far as the heat going off on Saturday and Sunday, I don't think we, like anybody employed that should be working on Saturday and Sunday, unless it's in the registry. Yes. But I don't think Miss Adkins should worry about that. And I think you could find places at the heat. And I know from my own experience in the health department, We've got a lot of decentralized health centers. And the overhead goes on in all those health centers. And the overhead goes on every time you're decentralized. And I fully believe that money could be saved by combining. Right now, that's my personal I believe we could find a place if we set out to do it. You mean to find for this, to consolidate the two off I think not that... Not now, I'll tell you why. Not now, count kind of that lease. But, well, 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 yeah, well, yeah, yeah I'm sure. We have the lease, but there's another reason, because for a long time, many people have stated that the di district was taking the registry over, and I think the timing and oh. the, the well, facts is the all right. They, they have just over. said the district should support the yes, registry. Right. If we're going to support the registry, we are taking it over. Now, really. Right. Well, let's, uh, another thing, this rent is 60-something, and what, down uh, the other is uh, 125 in the hotel where you couldn't get an office any place uh, for that, where you had your maid service and everything. Putting the two together is less than $200, and any of these apartments that you're talking about is 200, 225, and like that, I don't know where you're going. You're just going into more money. 
because just because the register has been at the Henry Grady all these years, I'm sure that nobody else there gets the register, uh, that is, gets an office space for what the register gets their office space because it's been there so many years and then years ago the person at the, that owned the hotel or something, I don't know that the history back of that uh, some way and made it possible for this uh, uh, less rent. So That's just I like can't. saying that St. Joseph Hospital down here so many years they shouldn't have moved, but they did move up here on Island Street and they got a beautiful place. Oh, the same place. Well, as far as what I'm, I'm trying to say is we looked at the places and we found that we would not come out any better the places that were centrally located for all the, the necessary, or uh, you might say the essentials, and making the two places workable. In the house, this uh, place over here on Peach Street, uh, the registry could be in the front room and you'd be way back in a small room. They had a kitchen and a bath. It would not be suitable at all because the, of the menu graphing and the, it, had it been separated with a suite or um, a small office between it, as they had in the Healy building at one time, it would have been ideal, provided the other things were adequate, the heating and the, the cooling and so forth. But every place that we saw, we, uh, Miss Collin went with us, it, uh, it didn't seem feasible. Maybe you can find something for less than that. Uh, it take a lot of work. Well, we should try to confine our discussion, all of this enters into the problem and uh, is thinking on the problem, I'm sure. But uh, if we can bring our thoughts to where do we go from here, we do have this motion. Uh, Could it be rewriting? Oh, she's rewriting. Well, can we vote? Well, I don't geez. believe I can vote till I know who's going to. See if I can get write that letter. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not. You know, I don't want to approve it, but I think some people that are more vitally concerned, even than I, should be pleased with the letter and think it says what we want to say. Well, while we're discussing it, wouldn't we'd have to have a change in bylaws if you raised any duties to add to what we already have in which to take care of the registry financially. You mean raise the statements are already ready to go out as soon as I can get the punch card back. I gave them to them before I went to the convention, but she was getting the material for recruitment page. What's which the is average cute. normal call for nurse gets that registers with the register? Say in a year, how many calls for the nurse get? Through the register. Uh -huh. It would just depend on how long her case is like. I don't, we don't have any information on that. Couldn't hardly. Oh, you even know how many nurses you have on your register and how many calls you received last year and died. You can't tell. I stayed three years and for four months with one patient. Some well, you had 1,300 in six then. weeks of calls, but some of those patients still are on duty. Some of the nurses that went on duty at that time are still on. You may work one day oh, or 